Question 16. When there is no default document located within a folder being requested HTTP error 403.14, the error lists the server version information as IIS 7.0. Can that be masked to avoid unwanted information disclosure? Answer. The default file for handling this error is contained in initpub custerinus. The footer of the error contains server version information. Internet Information Services 7.0 which of course can be removed or edited directly from the HTM file. Question 17. Can a remote IIS 7.0 server be provisioned using the Managed API? Answer. The Managed API Microsoft.web.administration has access to all of the settings that the native API does and has DCOM remoting support by using server manager.open remote static method. You can set any configuration settings but for beta 3 there is no support for runtime information such as the state of an app pool or the list of requests or worker process. Question 18. What is URL authorization? Why would it be used? Answer. In previous IIS versions you had to control access via file system ACLs. This is tedious and there is no web interface to do it. With URL authorization, you can control access to URLs using the IIS user interface or using web.config directly. Additionally, you can use non-Windows identities. For example, membership users and roles provided by forms authentication. Question 19. What changes, if any, to application host.config and web.config trigger a restart of all application pools? Answer. Any data in the application pool section relevant to that app pool, so either in application pool defaults or specific to that app pool, will cause WAS to recycle the app pool. Worker process can ask WAS to recycle app pools based on certain config changes. Currently the only one we do it for is global modules, but this is not a closed list as modules can ask for recycle based on config change. Question 20. Is there a native component of load balancing or clustering within Windows Server 2008 and or IIS 7.0? Answer. NLB is part of Windows Server 2008. It is essentially the same as it was in Windows 2003. To install NLB, go to Server Manager, Features, Add Features and select Network Load Balancing from the list. To configure NLB, you need to open a command prompt and run NLBMG. Ah, this is the UE that existed in Windows 2003. 3. Question 21. What is meant by configurable CPU usage? Answer. If the system-wide CPU exceeds a threshold dynamic compression will stop occurring, freeing up the CPU it was using. If the system-wide CPU drops below a different limit, dynamic compression will resume, saving bandwidth. Question 22. Why would I not enable dynamic compression all the time? Answer. Different users have different opinions on optimal CPU utilization. Some think a 20% average is perfect, others think 75%. If you want X and you're consistently above X, you might as well completely remove dynamic compression as it is never going to be used. Question 23. How does a dynamic compression factor in consistent CPU spiking versus constant CPU usage? Answer. It factors in average usage over the 30 seconds window since the last sample. So, even with irregular spikes, you will have dynamic compression on for at most 30 seconds after the spike. And if your spikes are instantaneous and so do not affect average CPU usage over 30 seconds much, they will not affect dynamic compression. Question 24. In a shared hosting environment, what should the default load user profile setting be? Answer. Setting load user profile equals false in application pool defaults is a good idea for shared hosting scenarios. The startup time of an app pool will be much faster and you avoid any temporary directory permission issues. Question 25. What is the cause of the HTTP 500.19 internal server error? Answer. The 500.19 error is caused by the IIS 7.0 feature delegation mode. When a feature is delegated to site owners and the site owners modify the feature, then their changes are persisted in web.config. If the server administration revokes the delegated management on that feature, then the website owner has the responsibility of cleaning up the feature details from web.config. Otherwise, all sites that had modified that delegated feature will immediately give an HTTP error 500.19 internal server error message. In order to avoid this issue, we recommend that hosters do not revoke delegated features once they are published to end customers. 
Question 26 How does IIS 7.0 handle web.config updates? Answer If the hosted site does not have a web.config IIS 7.0 will create one. If the site has a web.config IIS 7.0 modifies it. If the web.config is modified then the site owners have the responsibility of merging the changes and ensuring that the changes are manually merged and maintained. Question 27 At IIS 7.0 install time We did not install the management service What are the impacts of installing this service now that we are using shared configuration? Answer Installing management service does not modify app host.config or administration config at all The only changes you should see are the new binaries wmsbc.exe A self-signed certificate will be created and a few registry keys will be added This means that in theory nothing should break Question 28 Does installing the management service make any changes to the shared configuration or cling to make it work with the administration service answer? For the most part, it works out of the box since we use the redirection config settings for reading a post slash admo.config. However, for a detailed answer, it really depends on what scenarios you will be using. Shared config using local content, regular windows, or IIS users connecting to modify their local content and their web config. There is nothing to do. Everything should work out of the box. Shared config using remote content using Windows users. It should work provided the Windows accounts have access to their content. Shared config using remote content using IIS users. For this scenario you must change the identity of the service WMSVC to an account that has access to the remote content since we use the process identity for accessing content. Note that a post.config admo.config will work since we use redirection config Windows administrator managing a server connection it should work provided your windows administrator has right access to the shared config question 29 is CLR loaded automatically for each w3 WP slash app pool answer an application pool that only serves static files with all features installed occupies 3 MB private bytes 5 MB page file when ASP.NET requests are made we preload a small amount of the CLR during startup till the 100 KB the preload is configurable by a property on the application pool it is called managed runtime version the rest of the CLR tilde 8 MB will be loaded on the first ASPX request. Question 30 After setting up IIS 7.0 with WSS3 and using central administration to create a site collection, why the following error does occur the page cannot be displayed because your server's current configuration does not support it. To perform this task, use the command line operations in sudm.exe. Answer The server is set up in AD account creation mode. AD creation mode is a deprecated feature that is still supported but will be removed in v4 instead of allowing WSS to automatically create users in AD. The recommendation is to do user provisioning outside of WSS.